Hey kids, you know what? I have started working out. And my gym trainer told me that if I want to stay fit, I'll have to do a lot of cardio exercise. Well, I agree with the guy. So, today morning I woke up early and uh, I, went for, I went for a run in the park which is near my house. Well, there we have an oddly shaped jogging track so I started running around it. When I completed one round of it, I just wanted to know that how much distance I have run. But I just could not figure it out because, well, I don't know how to measure that. So later on the same day, I went to my math teacher and asked her if she could help me figure out the total distance I have run for. And the first question, you know the first question which she asked me was, well, she asked me that what was the shape of the jogging track. Well, I was puzzled that what is going to, what is she going to do uh, like by knowing the shape. So I just told her that this actually was the shape of the jogging track. Well, then she asked me that what were the dimensions of the sides. I told her that more or less these were the dimensions. You can see them right over here. And then she told me that I already have my answer. I don't have to ask her anything. I was like, oh, where it was the whole time. I'm still searching for it. Can you figure, can you, can you tell me that how much distance I have run? Well, I was still confused. I just wanted to know that how can I do it. So I asked my teacher that, can you tell me how can I find the distance just by looking at some numbers? Well, then she told me a very important term, a very important term which helps us for all sorts of measurement. And that term, my friends, was perimeter. Well, I was fascinated. This was a completely new term. I just wanted to know more about this perimeter. After all, this perimeter had solved a big problem of mine for the day. So I asked her, ma'am, what is the perimeter? What do you mean by what do we mean by perimeter? Well, she told me that this perimeter is actually the total length of the boundary of a closed ship. And the only thing I could understand was closed ship. Because well, a closed ship, it is closed. Well, so I simply asked her, ma'am, please elaborate. And then she asked me to see the figure very clearly and observe the lengths of all the sides. When I observed it, I understood that whatever lens which I am considering over here, if you consider any side, then that particular side is actually acting a, as a boundary of this figure. And this figure is actually a closed figure. And if I now add all the lens, then it will become the total length of the boundary of the closed figure. And so I could understand that by perimeter, she means the sum of all the sides of the given diagram, given figure. So using this, what we can do, we can find out what actual distance I'd run for. So let us now calculate. You could see that the lengths which are given here, well, it starts from 150. Then we have 230. Then we have 100. Then we have another 100, a 270, a 350 and a 500. Now, all these values are in meters, so outside this particular bracket, well, right, meters. So let us now add and find the perimeter or actually the distance which I had run for. So 150 plus 280 gives us 380, then 480, 580, 850, 1200 and 1700. So basically, I had run 1700 meter. Wow, that is so cool. Well, all we have to do is simply add the external sides or the boundaries of the figure and we'll have the perimeter. Well, this is actually known as mensuration. Well, this mensuration helps us find the various measurements which are related to closed shape. And these measurements, well, they can be in terms of perimeter, that is length of all the sides, or it can even be in area form. Like, if I take, if I now remove this figure and if I now draw a rectangle over here. Now, this rectangle, it's basically a four-sided figure and you can see that it has boundaries. So by calculating the length of these boundaries, we'll, find, we'll be able to find the perimeter. And at the same time, if I now just talk about this particular surface, which is enclosed inside it, then this particular surface, which is enclosed inside it, is called its area. So you can see that how mensuration helps us in finding the tiniest detail of a surface. With this, we have come to the end of this introduction part of mensuration. We'll continue in our next class with a new topic. But until then, keep practicing and have fun. Goodbye, guys.